Hey guys, it's Caro here, and in the last video I told you about my experience with interviewing for an internship at Microsoft. If you haven't seen this video, make sure to check it out for some more context, interview questions and salary figures. Today I would like to tell you how was the internship experience itself, if I recommend you to apply. I will talk specifically about the work you're doing as an intern, all the perks and benefits, activities and culture, and the special intern event and all the gifts we got at the very end. So stay tuned, click that like button so YouTube will recommend this video to more curious people like you and let's get to it! It was summer 2015 I just graduated uni, I was getting ready to go on a plane to Oslo in Norway. I didn't really have much time to prepare or come to Norway earlier to be able to like visit a little bit, travel, because my exams were just until the very very last date. I could only arrive one day before the work started. So Microsoft was nice enough to organize a plane for me, they also bought me a return ticket at the end of my internship. I spent the first night in a hotel also organized by Microsoft when my apartment was getting ready. Microsoft found the apartment for me. They also covered most of the costs. It was a converted post office building with a lot of lofts and just studio apartments. The apartment I got was a loft, which I initially loved. I loved the high ceilings. I loved the huge windows and the massive balcony. I grew to hate it uh, because there was no AC. And as you can imagine, during the summer, all of the hot air would go up and up is where the bed was. I didn't really have great sleep in there, but you know, Norwegian summer is not that bad. The massive heat is around 28 degrees, so living now in Australia with around 50 degrees, it's not that bad. It was also the first time living by myself. I used to live with my parents before as my uni was in the same city I was born and it was just like 15 minutes bus drive. I wasn't really incentivized that much to move away from there and like maybe share apartment with some randoms. I would definitely say that that was the best part of my internship, living alone. End of the video. So the first day of work, I arrived at around 10 a.m. to meet all of the team, get all of my equipment, all of the initial gifts uh, they are giving you. So there were some t-shirts, mugs, whatever else. I even have one still. It's actually a pretty good quality, no huge Microsoft logo. That's the back side, where you can actually see the logo. It's a nice thermal something. Anyway, I kept it. That's probably the only thing I kept. Then I went to pick up my computer and my phone and I got a MacBook and an iPhone. And that wouldn't be in any way weird and I wouldn't be really surprised with that if not the fact that they hired me as an Android engineering intern. So I can understand the Mac part but I can't really understand the iPhone part. So I asked my manager, why did I get an iPhone if I'm supposed to code for Android? Am I supposed to just use emulators or maybe we have some test devices? To which he responded, oh, uh, I thought you were an iOS engineer. Oh, no, I'm, I'm an Android engineer. I was hired here as an Android engineering intern. I actually don't have any experience with coding for iOS. Oh yeah, okay, uh, yeah, C can you do it anyway? I mean, yeah, why not? I guess it can be that different, it's still a mobile device after all, so the principles would be similar, right? So he didn't have much problem with me doing something I actually have no idea about, and I wasn't much stressed either, because as a student I would jump from one technology to another. In my previous part-time job I would also do a little bit of Android, a little bit of web, a little bit of whatever. So after I came to terms that I'm going to be an iOS engineering intern, I actually got my first and only task. So my project was to add a search function to Microsoft Delve. If you don't know what Delve is, no judgment. No one knows. But back to the task. I was supposed to just add the search functionality to the iOS app. The endpoint was already there, so all I had to do is create a nice interface based on the designs Microsoft provided me and make it work. The code base I entered by my then standards was huge. Probably the biggest code base I would work on at that point was maybe four people, but I wasn't really overwhelmed. I quickly realized the similarities between Android and iOS, so I could quickly navigate between the two. The UI part was different as Android doesn't use the iOS's drag and drop UI builder. I didn't really get much help around like coding good practices. I was, I was kind of left 
on my own. I got help when I asked for it, but I wasn't really proactively given feedback. There was no code reviews, there was no Git. Microsoft was using their own software at the time. They switched to Git a year later. For most of the time, I was only showing my peers progress, the UI, the functionality. I would sometimes ask about some of the code, but I never really went through a proper code review. But that didn't really bother me much at the time. I was fine just doing what I have to do and googling what I don't know or asking others. At some point early in the internship I had to intro myself to the whole company. I don't mean the whole Microsoft, I just mean the whole Oslo office, which was around 150 to 200 people at the time. You might have a questions about the language, right? It was Norway, but it was also Microsoft. So were we speaking English or were we speaking Norwegian? Most people were expats anyway, so we would all use English in the office and during all the official presentations. But there was also a lot of Norwegians who would use Norwegian all between them. Also somehow, weirdly, all of the managers were Norwegian. And one Greek. A little bit about the culture. We would get served breakfast every day and there would be some variations. It would usually be something about like oatmeal or oatmeals or really salty oatmeals. We also had lunch provided. The whole team would usually go at the same time. Sometimes I would switch it up and instead of going with my small team I would go with another team or there were some Polish people I would sometimes go with or maybe other interns. I like to switch it up and there was no really requirement to go with your team. The food was freshly prepared. There was no such thing as coffee walks. We would actually never leave office during the work hours. We would maybe go outside to the terrace if it was a nice sunny weather, which happened maybe five times during the summer. There was no such thing as like, let's grab a coffee and go for a walk, which is very surprising to me. There were some games available on the top floor, so there would be a ping pong table, standard table football, or however that thing is called, and there would also be a shuffleboard, which I think is a originally Norwegian thing, but I'm also not sure. Again, I should probably check that. Every last Friday on the month, which is also the same day we are getting paid, there would be free beers uh, at the top floor. Nearly everyone would just stay and chat and drink and after the office got closed we would go to a pub and experience the real Norwegian hospitality. There was no gym at the office, there wasn't any gym allowance. But also Norwegian culture is mostly about outdoor sports, so that's what we were doing. We would mostly hike and you have a lot of chances to hike in there. There's also a lot of people at work that are keen to hike. Apparently during winter, they ski to work. I have a friend who lives 10 kilometers away from the office and she would ski to work every day. Another cool thing you get as an intern is five days of paid leave, which I used to go for a cabin trip to Gaustatoppen with some of my friends. It was a really beautiful place and waking up to this view was amazing. So now the thing that everyone waits for, the intern event. So we probably heard about the huge events when they invite celebrities. No, it didn't happen. <laughs> we were only six people, but the event was amazing. It was such a cool vibe. What happened is there was six people, uh, including two girls, all of us from different countries. The event started with us and two organizers uh, walking to the opera house. And there there was this huge party limo waiting for us. It later took us from one place to another. Initially it took us to the cemetery. Cemetery? Like the place where dead people lie. And then we got a tour of all the dead Norwegians. Famous dead Norwegians. Later on we realized it's because the escape room they were preparing for us was just not ready and they had to kill the time somehow. Great choice. So in the weight room there were those metal puzzles that consist of few elements, like usually two to three elements, and then you have to separate them. So I used to love those games, and of course first thing I did when we went to the weight room, I was like, oh, okay, let me solve that. And I would just like smash one after another, after another, after another, which made two teams that we formed for the escape rooms both fight for me. I have never felt that wanted in my life. So little they knew that my English pronunciation will later be a huge problem while solving the puzzles. A.K. saying R as R. <laughs> so the first room was a puzzle about a stolen screen piece that we had to find and that was definitely the best escape room I have ever tried in my life. The other one was just like a murder mystery something something. We solved both of them in time. Smart. So after that the limo took us to some fancy restaurant in Akebrige where I had a steak. 
when I still used to eat meat. Then we went to a rooftop bar to have some drinks and it was all paid by Uncle Bill. So it was already late and we thought that we are going back to the office to just everyone to go home. But then one of the organizers said that she left something in the office and that we should go with her. And that was a deception because what actually waited for us in the office was a stack of Xboxes, all the Xbox One. So did I get a return offer? Yes, I did. My manager was actually insisting on me not doing masters and just staying there right after the internship and just continue as a full-time software engineer. But I really wanted to do my masters. So instead they gave me a return internship offer for the next summer, which I took and it was a mistake. Why it was stupid and why you shouldn't do it, I will tell you all of that in another video. So now the question, should you do it? Should you try to apply for internship at Microsoft? Yes, wherever you are, Microsoft internship does your CV a favor. The amount of offers I got after putting Microsoft intern 2015 on my LinkedIn profile, just like hundred, ten, hundred, is this even a word? Either way, companies work hard on developing good internship programs and I'm sure those in the US went through much better tailored experience than I did. Maybe that's some of you. Let me know in the comments down below. Where did you take your internship? What did you love about it? What did you hate about it? Did you take the return offer? So yeah, that was my first Microsoft internship experience. Don't get excited about the second one. It was... <laughs> So one more thing while we are on the Xbox topic. So I sold mine a year ago and now I'm thinking, should I buy the new Xbox Series X or should I invest in the PlayStation 5 or should I just wait? Please let me know your thoughts. I'll probably force my friends to buy both anyway, so I can just play with them. 